This is Bottom Line Banter, unfiltered conversations about all things business, with your hosts, Michael, Frankie and Tony. Did you guys hear about the recent Four Corners segment? It was on the Woolies and Coles and like large, large uh, supermarkets. Yes. That was very interesting few days for, for the CEO, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone in the country probably got their header on that one at some point. Do you guys have any, any hot takes? For me, it's, there's a few things here. One is they're bashing the supermarkets, but the supermarkets are just at the tail end of all of this. There's from the farmer and, you know, they've got a product they bring out. It's, it's meat or it's chicken or it's eggs or milk, whatever it might be. Potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> but there's a whole pile of transactions between when it leaves the farm to when it's on the supermarket, which is, you know, it goes on a truck, to a processing plant or an abattoir mm. or a dairy. Yep. Gets processed, it gets packed, it gets transported multiple storage, times. Yep, and yep. all of these organisations, they're the ones that are increasing their prices. Mm. And your supermarkets at this world, whether it's an Aldi or a Coles or a Woolworths, it doesn't matter who mm. it is, gets the product and they put a margin on it. Yeah, I mean, what we but, see on the shelf is just wrapping yeah, all and that. And it's gone right? up, but mm. it hasn't gone up. Coles aren't making a 50% increased profit mm. on that. And there's a second part, and that's that 75% of people who walk into a supermarket are taxpayers, they have income. And part of the job is when you're working for someone, you have superannuation. Superannuation funds that we all are part of, what do they do? They buy, they invest in companies. And the companies they invest in are people like Coles. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that's right. and their job is to make sure that the investments give a, a fair return for the members, which is us. So we're all shareholders. So if we're, <laughs> if we're ripping into whoever it is, whichever super fund it is, Australian super or care super or whoever it is, because they're not giving me a good return. And that's also because the, the company they're invested in is not giving a good return, mm. whether it's a mining company or a Coles. Mm. So once one area of people complaining about the crappy return that they're getting and, and another, at the same time they're complaining <laughs> about the price gouging. Sure. But it's the same business. They're oh, they're, they're, yeah, they're at odds with each other. Yeah. I know you, you've got mm. some special experience in this area. I've probably spent around 15 years analysing the relationships between buyers and uh, vendors and suppliers of major retailers. They seem to keep quoting the UK market all the time. Oh, you know, Coles and Woolies, they're making yeah. more eBay, they're making more And there's something profit. about your personality that tells me you know about the UK. Um, it might be your accent, maybe? Roughly, <laughs> roughly. I know it a little bit, a little bit. Um, but I find it a really interesting dynamic. They go on and on about this uh, this duopoly status. Uh, you know, one could say probably the UK market is really a triopoly of sorts. If mm-hmm. you like, I think the Coles Woolies market share is around sixty five percent. If you take the big That's three right. of the UK, they're about fifty eight percent. But the really interesting thing that I noted over the years and working with a lot of these retailers is this this a problem of cost and margin and all this yeah. and the farmers and the news. The press releases yep. about the poor farmers and about the poor suppliers, and it's always one directional. The same problems exist in the UK. Mm-hmm. So there's a really big focus on break a duopoly or it's the retailer's fault and all this. Is it really when you look at the other markets where there is a broader spread, there is no duopoly, mm-hmm. it's a triopoly or it's a, you know, the US is, they often quote the US as well, where it's a big, a big 10 mm-hmm. of sorts. But really, if you compare Coles, they have around 28% market share. So does Tesco mm-hmm. in the UK. Walmart has around 25%. So really there's a lot of big buying power, yes, uh, but there's also a lot of very big vendors. And notably from the release, I think one of the stories that came out uh, around someone negotiating after a cost price increase, it's worth noting that is an everyday occurrence for all retailers all over the world. And this particular vendor was a multinational, you know, me, I, no one knows who it actually was. It could have been a, a Unilever, a Procter & Gamble, a Coca-Cola, mm-hmm. a PepsiCo, a Nestle, Mondelez. And they all have to manage these cost prices as well. Uh, but it's not a one-way directional, you know, we need more money and you're not giving it to us. Yeah, there is often that comparison, you're right, between, say, us and the UK. And, you know, there's, there's, there's probably various reasons for that, or the US. But, and you're sort of pointing out that, you know, yes, they're more diversified over there or it's less condensed, right? But is it, is it any better? But I suppose, is that even a comparison we want to make? Does it work mm. better? Like, do we want a triopoly or a quadruply? <laughs> or do we need like 20 main players in the market that have 5% market share on average each, right? Uh, you know, what's going mm. to work best in terms of market dynamics? Well, I, I, I can assure you that the people I've been speaking to, friends of mine in the US, 
are complaining about exactly the same thing, mm. the price of goods and services and supermarkets going through the roof and they've got ten times the choice that we have. Yeah. So I don't think it would necessarily fix the problem. This is kind of sort of like an end state, right? Like companies are incentivized to grow. It's kind of the market dynamic. Uh, min max, you want to minimize expenses, maximize profits. Everybody in the supply chain wants to do that. And as you said, the person at the very end who has their super invested in this also wants those returns. Mm. It's the same as the housing market. Yeah. Everybody, once you're in, wants the house prices to go up. But if you're yeah, not yeah. in, you, do, you want them and to yeah, come down. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, like odds, everything's at odds with itself at all and times. There's, there's a lot of talk around the, the margin comparison, for example, between UK and, and Australia. Of course, it is a little bit lower in the UK, you know, sub 3% in a lot of cases. But do you really want your main businesses, you know, look at Coles, Woolworths, they employ over 100,000 yeah. Australians mm. uh, each. Mm -hmm. Do you really want that company at risk of collapse or do you want that company to be healthy and profitable? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I yeah, suppose that that 100,000 salaries pays a lot of dividends into yeah. the economy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And they donate a huge amount of money and goods to underprivileged as well. I suppose the question there is where's the threshold of risk there? So is mm. it do they need a billion dollars profit? <laughs> do you need three hundred million dollars more profit this financial year? Is that is that protecting you against being, mm. you know, at risk? Or could that come down by fifty percent and the savings get passed on? And there's always a sweet spot as with any of this. You don't want your organizations that you're invested, your superannuation funds are invested in and, and things like that, and they have huge shareholdings in. You don't want that at risk. If that goes down, the knock-on effect is is catastrophic. Yeah, yep. and the other real factor is the salaries, the wages. You know, coming mm -hmm. from the UK marketplace, at least in a lot of like-for-like -like roles, you can be up to fifty percent better paid like-for-like -like in this market yeah. versus mm. the UK. Yep. A lot of the starting right. salaries are a lot lower uh, for various sectors. In absolute Not in, terms or relative. Depending on the sector, you know, some are probably closer than others, but some yeah. are really quite significantly yep. different. Yep. And so on average, of course, minimum wage is higher here and things like that. So all of those 100,000 people being employed, all of those extra salaries being pumped into the economy at that higher level, it also makes me think it's probably not quite so fair to draw that direct comparison. Mm, mm. Yeah. Particularly some of the comments around the supply chain and logistics as well, of course, it is different or a different economics yeah. at scale here yeah. in, in this marketplace. It is costing more. And when mm. it costs more, the actual transaction is more. So no one is talking about the fact that the the Apple pays of this one, everyone's tapping their phone to pay for oh, all these yeah. items at the <laughs> yeah, supermarket. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're making more than anybody oh, yeah. ever before. And all those profits are not in Australia. Mm. Those transactions are done they're leaving, in another country. Yeah, they're leaving right. the country. That's no right. one says anything about that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So much for the local economy on that one. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's all talk of like the ACCC doing an inquiry into price gouging and all that sort of stuff. I mean, the, the position I occupy as a consumer, I think... Go for it. That's great. Because if there's nothing mm. if there's nothing bad going on, which is kind of the messaging that we've been getting, then there's there's nothing to hide, right? And we live in a system where, you know, you need regulation to keep things on the level, right? Yeah. Like we all need to be held accountable. We have processes in mm. uh, in where we work at Perfectus, right? Like the, where we hold ourselves accountable yeah. for, for everything that we do. One of the providers saying that they provided stock to one of the major retailers that was rejected without reason. I've spent around many, many years now working in this industry and understanding those interactions. And I know these things don't happen without reason. Mm. You know, there's, a, there's schedules, there's frameworks, there's rules and regulations about what you can ship, when you can ship it, is it delivered in full and on time. And there's a numerous major complexities around that. It would surprise me if those sort of scenarios are indeed so one-sided. Yep. And there's mm -hmm. always another side to the story. There's always yeah. another side. Uh, and that's sometimes, I think, where the media will sensationalize a little bit. You guys would have noticed as well that in a lot of large chains now, they have their own branded products. Mm. So they're always 20 or 30% cheaper than mm. the other brands that are being stocked by external suppliers. So, uh, you know, as a consumer, mm. I'm like, I want to pay less. I want to keep more of my own money. But it feels like a bit of a trap entrapment. I'm like, <laughs> oh, it doesn't make sense for me to just be stubborn and buy the more expensive rice because I'm, you know, because at the end of the day, I'm punishing myself. Mm. Well, um, but then they also need. They need revenue too. Did you know that a lot of them are actually from the same the producer? Same. Yeah. Anyway, so right. when I was in the UK, I think it was uh, Weetabix, you know, Wheaties. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. UK yeah. Weetabix. Uh, they are all provided, the own brand version of Weetabix yep. was made by Weetabix. It was the same organization, same factories. Right. Uh, different sort okay, of I did, in, I didn't ingredient mix. So hmm. often you're not always, just by going for the premium brand, uh, you're not actually getting yep. anything dramatically Correct. different. 
I, I was at the supermarket and I bought a – we're looking to buy a packet of cheese, the brand that everyone knows, and the supermarket had their own brand mm. and it was half the price. Yeah. Coles yeah. cheese against the brand. If you look at the back, the address of where it was made was the same. Right. Mm. Same so brand. keep an eye out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and and I, as a consumer, I have a choice. Yeah. Now, if I bought the more expensive one, is that gouging? I think they've also done the right thing yeah. by giving me the opportunity to buy the cheap one if I decide to do that. But on that branded good, you might find a lot more of the margin goes back to the multinational, you know, yeah. products like constructed by a Nestle or a Mondelez or a Unilever. They're in a huge amount of brands all over mm. the world. Often most of the consumers on the ground don't recognize. Mm -hmm. but they own hundreds and hundreds of brands. And, and that's where a huge chunk of the profits are also yeah, going. Yeah. I think the uh, chairman of the ACCC could do a better job of looking at something that affects people as much as supermarkets. And to me it's blindingly obvious that it's manipulated and it's the price of petrol. If, oh, you, right. if you're coming yeah. in, there's, there's a public <laughs> holiday coming up in a few weeks mm. and you watch a few days before the price is going to go up through the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine so if that uh, happened with food. Yeah. Mm. Everyone would go crazy. About well, that. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in our in our timeline that happens, right, because you look at what's happened to the taxi industry has been sort of muscled out by app-driven services now and now they have a floating yeah. point as well where you can refresh your your ride before you commit to it on Uber and yeah. then five minutes later it's, yeah. it's a different price. Yeah. The, there's a lot of risk also taken on by uh, both the retailers, both the supermarkets, the grocery providers and some of the major suppliers. If you look at um, fresh goods or I don't know, like watermelons or... Mm anything fresh like that. Sometimes they can sit on the shelf for a long time, but when it's a really nice hot summer's day, unexpectedly in the spring or the autumn, the weather's really yeah. nice, people go, oh, I'd love a slice of watermelon. Oh, right. And, and sales just go through the roof yeah. organically, yeah. unbeknown to, you can't really forecast it's hard to for predict. that. Yeah, yeah. You and know. not so long ago we had some floods and the price of lettuce, everyone was complaining about the price of lettuce. Mm. It was going up to... Oh, yeah, lettuce went out of I think even roll, yeah. K KFC yeah. ran out of lettuce. Can, they, 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 started started using, they started using some cabbage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They were using cabbage. Yeah. And, and Chinese restaurants didn't have Sancho Bao anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Because yeah. lettuce was too expensive. <laughs> and everyone was ripping into the supermarket. It's a Sancho Bao in your hand. You just yeah, have to put your hands out. Yeah, you just get a spoon. It's not the supermarkets. It's a storm that's damaged the... Yeah. ...the... The crops and whatever arrives left is what it's going to be in a supply and demand. The interesting thing for me, again, as a consumer is just wanting to know mm. that what, what's actually built in from all the inflation that's happening and where, where's the actual gap that's... Is there anything mm. being manipulated artificially? Does it need to be? Do we need $300 million more to, or does anybody need that much more, right, in, in a quarter or a year or whatever it is, financial mm. year, um, when maybe the cost basis actually remain flat? So it's like... I just want it, you just want that reassurance, right? So there's got to be that transparency, I think. And that, that's the constant balancing act, I think, they're always trying to focus on uh, across the supply chain. It's trying to stabilise the prices for the consumer. Mm. And inherently, there's a lot of risk. The lettuce example is a great one. Uh, there's a lot of risk built into that because you need the stocks, you need the supplies. You don't know when a storm is going to happen. Mm. Uh, you don't know if demand yeah. is going to go through the roof. Exactly. And you can't just suddenly switch that on with one day notice. Yep. You know, and yet that's that's all planned six yeah, months out. Yep, yeah. and eggs is another example. Mm. They're saying the price of eggs is going to go through the roof because they're closing the batteries, mm. and everyone's going to have free range eggs, which is great. But the price of eggs is going to go up thirty percent. Mm -hmm. That's not price gouging. That's people complaining mm. about <laughs> yeah, chickens sure. being squashed up next to sure. each other. Do we think that sixty five percent market share is far too risky for only two businesses to to control when it's such a critical good? for society to function, right? Companies get large, they acquire other companies. It's what you do mm. in the life cycle of business, mm. right? Of course, it meets in the middle. Whenever you need to, it's the supply and demand need to meet. And so it's always going to reach a natural equilibrium one way or another. Okay.